Right, welcome everybody. Welcome today. It is another live holistic call here online and live uh, using the platform called Zoom. Those of you that haven't been part of it in the past, I you know I totally urge you and you know I like you to be part of it because it's a very easy method of communication, it's a wonderful platform to connect. All those of us, you know, who love sharing and sharing our lives, sharing our passion, sharing our, you know, how we can help others to manifest what they truly want. Today's call is all about how we can embrace more generosity. How, could, how can we embrace more being generous with others who I think we all very much on the side of, of very much giving, you know, we are, we are all givers, aren't we? Russell, Natasha? Yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> So, uh, but at the same time, is actually how can we balance it off by saying, okay, how can I allow to receive? How can I allow to give to myself and be more compassionate with myself? Whether it's because I deserve, I can have this. I can have more freedom. I can have more more uh, peace. I can have more freedom to not have any physical pain or just do whatever I really want, whatever I really like. And we all deserve to have that, don't we? We all deserve to have that, that freedom. Um, so uh, today's call is going to be, I'm going to introduce something I call it an audience with an, a special guest today, okay? And today's guest is Russell. Now, I just feel that we're going to spend around 10 minutes. I will be asking some questions and I'm going to have a conversation about uh, Russell's sort of... Uh, passion and what he's there to offer to the world okay Russell is a connective healer and he's going to say a few words in a moment about himself and Natasha also on the course is a crystal therapist and I've, I've worked with Natasha in the past and she has come on my radio show as well both of you have come on my radio show as well so um, now connective healing uh, Russell let me just start with you so tell us a little bit about yourself um, well, I, um, I'm a, a connective healer, uh, almost by accident, really. Um, I discovered that something strange was uh, going on in, with my hands during meditation sessions a few years ago. And at the time, I was a motor racing uh, professional instructor. So this sort of thing was, uh, as you can imagine, was quite a surprise. So um, I was persuaded by uh, the members of the meditation group to look into it a little bit more. And I investigated the, um, you know, the usual stuff like Reiki. Um, I also went and did a course on, um, with Eric Pearl, uh, Reconnective Healing. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, got interested in something called the Empower Disc by Kobe Zwickler. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there came a time in my life where... I was ready for a change. So about three years ago, I discussed it with my wife and uh, we decided that I could set up on my own uh, with my own healing practice. And ever since then, I've been helping people, um, as you say, sometimes being generous with my time. If I felt that people uh, you know, were in need and they couldn't necessarily afford to, to pay um, and sometimes getting paid for it. So uh, I've been working on my um, my sort of uh, generosity a little bit in terms of being generous to myself yes uh, as well as everybody else so uh, that, that is quite a tough one for anybody in this uh, field at the moment I think yes absolutely um, um, so so connective healing uh, the, what is it exactly connecting healing because uh, it sounds very jigging but for those of us who are yes. not very familiar with, uh, you know, with the holistic therapies, those who are going to be, you know, watching back later again. So what yeah. is connective healing? Well, connective healing is uh, connecting to your body's own healing ability. Um, we all have the, uh, the ability to heal ourselves and that manifests itself when we see a cut heal automatically without any outside intervention. But we seem to have forgotten how to do the big stuff. Um, and we usually end up going to the doctors or the hospital or um, taking various painkillers in order to deal with physical, emotional, and mental pain. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
Kobe uh, discovered uh, about 20 odd years ago that by uh, connecting to the higher consciousness or the higher self or the higher brain function, whatever you would like to call it, uh, we can turn on the ability to uh, heal the body so, and mind. So what I did, I started uh, looking into this more and more and uh, I did the practitioner's course. Uh, so basically, for, for the lay person out there who isn't already into holistic therapies, I would say that um, just imagine that you could close your eyes uh, and you've got, say, a back pain, and you can ask yourself to get on and heal the back pain immediately. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what I teach, and that's what I, I do for people. Okay, so, so again, I'm going to go for the, all, of, all of those people out there who I believe haven't got much you know clarity or a little bit cynicism or skept, you know being a bit skeptical yeah. about you know you know what i'm talking about russell so i am representing I now yeah. uh, i've got a very tough job here i'm representing all these people out there <laughs> yes. because, uh, for me for me i can i understand that we have the power to connect our bodies and then sometimes we are going through phases in life that different symptoms turn up because this is the, the right time for us to look into it, look inside and see what's going on and find a way to heal it and move forward. Yes. And, uh, and then I would like to ask a question and then it's, it's why are we actually going through this kind of pain? You know, because I've read about it and I am, you know, I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm involved with color healing and heart intelligence, but I've got this question on behalf of all these people out there. Um, why are we going through this? You know, why pain? Um, well, I believe that um, we, are being, uh, we are being shown that we have blockages. Um, and it may be something from your childhood or, or more recently. But I believe that when we have what we call a bad experience, um, the body remembers that and it may well be a physical injury or it could be an emotional uh, pain. And, and I just think that if we learn how to release these blockages, which I, I say that I'm a little bit like um, giving acupuncture but without the needles. Mm -hmm. So we're releasing the, the body's energy, the chi as the Chinese call it, to get to the, the part of the body that is in pain and, and release that blockage that we've got. And, and some people uh, that, that I come across, you know, this is experiential, uh, seem like that they don't actually know that they've got these blockages. Mm -hmm. uh, and they keep repeating over and over again the same mistakes, whether it be, uh, you know, in their personal life or work or to do with health or money. And if they only knew that they could release these blockages that are holding them back and they are limiting their self-beliefs, then I think that everybody will be a lot healthier. And I've got probably, I've seen over 300 people now in the past three years and I have lots and lots of testimonials that show people who aren't into this sort of thing and don't believe it, are very sceptical. And I come from a, I mean, I'm an Olympic standard sceptic, you know, or I was a few years ago. Then um, I think that uh, if people just experience this, and it's not just with connective healing, it could be with Reiki or crystal therapy or meditation. You know, we all use primarily the same stuff. I think you know, no matter what label you've got on your on your job um, as a, a therapist, then you know we all use the same stuff. And what we're all trying to do is get people to release these uh, blockages they have mm -hmm. and, uh, and be able to live a much more fulfilled life and get rid of pain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, I am just talking from experience like other people that uh, will be joining us later on and uh, watching back the call, uh, that we have suffered from some sort of pain at some point in our lives, whether it was physical pain or mental pain or emotional pain. Um, it's just part of being a human. You know, it's part of, uh, you know, there's some, some ways that uh, we accumulate this kind of, uh, you know, symptoms or traumatic experiences or life changes, shocks that, uh, you know, that can have an impact on our psyche, on our, mm -hmm. on our body, in our mind. And our heart as well, our hearts can actually block as well and not being open to love again. 
we heard these stories as well. But uh, what you're saying here, Asel, is actually you with your with your um, uh, connecting healing. It's uh, there's no sort of uh, uh, it's it's you don't have to take any medication. Uh, just tell us a bit more about like you don't need you don't need any any particular uh, sort of uh, uh, like uh, healing sessions. What do, how how many healing sessions do they need, or how does that work? Well, I found, uh, I mean, I give one-to-one sessions and I also run six classes a week in the Manchester and Cheshire area, um, which are just an hour long. And I believe that probably about 70 to 75% of people can fix whatever they've asked me to fix um, within that hour or, or maybe two. Some things are very, very quick. So if it's just a very simple issue with a back or a neck or a headache, Something like that. It can be very, very quick. Um, and another good example is people struggling to sleep or relax. Mm. You know, within 30 seconds, they can be asleep. If only they know how to communicate with that part of the mind that is kind of running their show. Um, so, yeah, it does vary from person to person. For example, I saw somebody who would had a problem. Uh, it was an emotional issue and had the problem since they were a child. So something that's been around that long isn't going to be fixed in 10 minutes. But, so it may need a number of sessions. But what I like to do is I like to teach people how to do it for themselves. Mm-hmm. So I can see them once or twice, but you know, I, I try and show them how to do it themselves so that they can get on. And, and further down the line, they can fix things themselves and uh, help their own families and friends as well. So, you know, it's... It, it does vary. I see some instant stuff and I see some stuff that might take a few days or weeks, uh, you know, 10 minutes a day. Okay. So it, it is a very individual uh, and very, you know, sort of subjective as well, how people are, are ready to receive the healing. Uh, they want to make that transformation for themselves, that kind of shifting. And also if it's a chronic illness or a chronic disease, that may take yes. a bit longer. Okay. Uh, yeah. but at the same time, then you may have a, a, a change within a few seconds or a few minutes. You've seen that Absolutely. happening as well. Okay. I have, yes, yes. So how can, can, uh, how can we get in touch with you people that are actually going to connect with you later on? Um, how can they get in touch with you? Well, my website is uh, russeltreasure.co.uk. Um, there are a few testimonial videos up there of just... You know, everyday people, um, there's a really good one from a chap who was a builder, very skeptical. Um, that's a really good one. Mm-hmm. And um, my email address is on there, but it's Russell, uh, russ at russeltreasure.co.uk. Um, all contact details are on the website there. And I've also got a Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter, all at Russell Treasure. And I'd be more than happy to answer any questions by email or phone. Um, I, I just love helping people. Yes, yes, I, I feel that I have, I have that. Uh, that's that's really, really um, strong coming from you, Russell. Uh, and then I would like to say, since we are talking about places where where you are you are offering healing sessions, it's a, yes. a venue, a fabulous venue that I have uh, personally hosted events there in the in the past five or six years, uh, and it's called Blissland. Okay, yeah. so so those people that haven't been to Blissland yet. They have compl- really. They, you're missing out big time. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so, we are there on Fridays every week. So um, Fridays is it eleven o'clock in the morning? Yes, it is. Yeah, and, and all of the um, all of the dates uh, that that we run, all the classes, uh, will all be on the website very soon. But I'm I'm very uh, active on Facebook. Yes. So Bliss and. Um, the, uh, the yard at Alderley Edge and the yoga tree in Congleton and places like that, you know, uh, we, we're trying to build these up as well. So I'm hoping to uh, do two classes a day from Monday to Friday, plus my one-to-one. So I'm going to be quite busy. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, it's 2016 is the year of visibility. So yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing here now as we are. Uh, that's what the videos, you know, going out there, they are all about. That's what, you know, the online work is about. But also, you can take away the power of uh, 
in-person communication, uh, really, you know, connecting, mm. you know, in a circle of people or having one-to-one consultation or healing or even even have a friendly chat and just catch up, you know, uh, have a hug and look people in the eye. That's, you cannot replace <laughs> that, can you? Yes. Um, yes. So, but I'm really, I'm delighted that we have platforms like this in 21st century where we can still share our light, share our passion and help others, inspire others. That's what it's all about. So, mm. uh, Russell, thank you so much. Uh, it, it's, it's just within these 10 minutes, we just share a little bit about, about what you're involved with, what you're offering. And hopefully people are watching back. They will be inspired to come and find out more about it. And then actually book a session with you and try something different, try something new, why not? You know, that's what life is all about, you know? Uh, so, um, is, is there any, any uh, Natasha, I'm gonna ask you if, if you if you'd like to ask any questions, uh, if you've got anything that, uh, you know, you would like to find out more about, and also say a few things about yourself. Okay, thank you. No, thank you, Russell. That was really interesting. It was because um, obviously, as you know, I'm mean, an do crystal therapy and also Reiki um, and another form of uh, therapy, which is through the hands. So it was interesting to hear about connective healing. Um, it's something I haven't heard about before. So I'll definitely have a look at your website and uh, have a look at uh, a little bit more about what you do. Um, I was uh, a question I was kind of thinking um, I've I've had a number of injuries um, over the last 10 years um, in various sort of torn muscles and broken bones Mm -hmm. and I remember when they were healed that um, my brain seemed to keep telling me that the injury was still there and when I broke my ankle um, it um, took me a long time to trust my ankle that it could hold my own body weight and it just it seemed to be my brain telling me more than my body my body seemed to be fixed so um, and I still feel it now I still feel a lot of pain in these injury areas so I was just interested with what you do like um, because when you said about like releasing those blockages, if it, if how how it was connected really, how the brain is still connecting to those injuries, even though they were like ten years ago. Yeah, sure. Um, out of interest, I see an awful lot of people who ask me if we can work on, say, for example, their back, um, and then the shoulder starts uh, because connective healing actually involves quite a lot of movements. Mm-hmm. So the person moves around as a bit mm-hmm. being fixed. Um, and the shoulder will start moving as well, or instead of the back. And I ask, you know, mm-hmm. what's going on there? Have you had a, ever had an injury? And, and in the vast majority of cases, people will say, yes, I, I damaged that years ago, and I thought it was fixed, but it, clearly it wasn't because they started to get these movements. And, you know, with connective healing, you get a heat or a cold or a tingling sensation in the area that's being fixed. And they say, yes, I'm getting some sort of sensation there. Now, your question, I, I think, is a very good one. And, you know, I don't think we actually know for sure. Um, but what happens, I think, is that we think it's fixed um, because maybe the pain is reduced. So we're kind of happy with that level because we were in such pain before. But we're happy with a reduced level. But because the pain hasn't gone away completely, um, you know, we, we kind of say, okay, I can live with that. And also because of the death system, you know, once they've fixed you up to a point, you're kind of off the books then. You, you know, you, they move on uh, and leave you to your own devices, I find. So I just think that we don't go that extra mile to, to correct the problem 100%. Maybe because in some cases we don't know that it's not fixed properly. Mm. You know, until somebody like me comes along and, and things start happening again in that area years later. So it's a very good question, I, and I don't know why people don't complete on these injuries. Um, and, and the blockages can sometimes be mentally emotional. Um, you know, maybe they haven't had the right um, aftercare. You know, the right therapy after the uh, injury to completely fix it. But um, I do come across a lot of those yeah. uh, situations. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting to kind of find. Because I mean, I, I um I use crystals in a kind of acupuncture kind of way as well mm. along the meridians, and mm-hmm. find sort of blockages and kind of release it around there. Um, 
but I've got so many injuries that happen to be all on the right side of my body. I've um, mm. convinced myself that I've obviously got a yin and yang imbalance because <laughs> it tends, I know I had an excess um, yang energy for many years mm. and I've told myself I've obviously not balanced that out if I've got all the injuries down on the one, <laughs> the one side. So mm. might have something to do with that as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was just whether I focused because it's a shoulder injury, a knee injury, and an ankle injury. So it's quite it's, um, in major joints. Um, yeah. And it just, I've had. Natasha, are they, are they all on the same side by any chance? Are they all on the right side or the yes, left they side? Are. Which side are you? Yeah, all on, the, all on the right side. On the right side? Okay. Right. Yeah. So this yeah. is the, the U side. So, the, the right side is the yin side, um, and the left is the yang. Uh, left is yin, yin and right is, right is yang, so... I thought it was the other yeah. way around, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, definitely in balance, anyway, <laughs> one, way or, <laughs> one way or another. Well, but, uh, no. yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see if whether I still... If the, with the connective healing, would you work on a particular area, or do you work more stemming from the brain? Um, well, I ask people to concentrate on the area that they want to fix. So whilst, um, okay. well, whilst you are putting your attention into the area that is, that is painful, the, the, the mind, the brain automatically starts sending um, the healing to that area. And it can work on two or three areas all at once at the same time. So probably the best thing is okay. to we'll get together, have a cup of coffee, and I'll, uh, I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that would be good. <laughs> I could do with working on all three, so yeah, <laughs> that would be, no be good. Fun. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, it would be lovely. It would be lovely to have you over here, Natasha, at some point soon. It would be lovely to, to see you. So um, thank you yes. so much. Thank you so much for your questions, Natasha. Have you got anything else to add, anything else to, to ask? Are you complete for the moment? Uh, I'm complete at the moment. Where, where do you live, Russell? Um, I'm kind of in between Nutsford and Warrington. Cheshire way. Right. Cheshire. Cheshire. I, I travel all over okay. Cheshire and Manchester. Yeah. So when you come okay. over, Natasha, to see me, then we'll arrange to see Russell as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> lovely. That'd be good. Okay. So um, I'd like to, I'd like to, to have a, li a little bit of a discussion um, open discussion between us about the the act of manifesting and manifesting now we're talking about manifesting uh, physical vitality or freedom to feel at ease with yourself and release pain and emotional blockages and how that has an impact also on manifesting any dream we like any dream we've got and it's it's all about it's all about the more the more we we allow ourselves to and, and really connect with our own our own um, power and giving ourselves what we need and connecting with this this whatever that is our higher self or you know our, our higher you know whatever power we may want to God or universe um, that that gives us more of the of this of the of the possibility that things are we can ha anything can happen anything is possible. Um, but it's actually again, Christina. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go. I can hear my 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 children all screaming upstairs. So oh, yes. I'm, I'm oh, sorry. Yes. I'm going to have to leave. Oh. Okay. Um, that's yeah, right. I've left my husband okay. up with three of them, but uh, yeah, I've got two of them not well at the moment. So I'm sorry. I'm going to have to leave the call short. But I'll come and join you next week. That's okay. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Natasha, for being with us. Thank you. Bye. All okay. right. Sorry, I can't say. It's a pleasure meeting you, Russell, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. See you soon, Natasha. Bye for Thank now. You. Bye. Do you want you? You can actually. Okay, she did it. Okay, brilliant. So Russell is me and you now. So so yeah. what what are what are your thoughts on that? What what do you think? You know, what are of our feelings uh, instead of? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm living proof. Um, of manifestation mm -hmm. um, I've got a very long story which uh, I won't bore everybody with tonight um, but I was in serious trouble in all areas of my life in about 2009 and 10 
Um, and I, you know, I started off like a lot of people do with the secrets. Um, and then I realized like a lot of people that you can't just sit in a room and ask to win the lottery, but don't actually go and fill out a lottery ticket. So you go to take some actions as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that as long as you um, are in the mode of uh, receptivity and you are open to it and you do have um, positive, um, you know, a positive attitude and a, a, a positive image of, of what you want and where you want to be. Mm-hmm. I think you're far more likely to end up with, with what you dream about than if you sit there and, you know, just moan about life and, um, and be generally hacked off with everything that's happened to you, which I did for a little while. You know, I went through that kind of phase of, of blaming everybody. Um, it was never my fault. And um, I, I kind of lost everything back then. And uh, I walked away with the clothes I was stood up in. Mm-hmm. And now I'm... I'm very happily married to um, my soulmate and uh, I've got a lovely home and pets and, you know, I'm healthy and we eat nice food. So I think that from the beginning, starting with, say, something like The Secrets, that gives you that idea of, you know, you've got to do something positive mm-hmm. to, to start the ball rolling. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess accepting accepting what whatever happened at some point in your life, it's there's something something to learn from. And for me, guilt is is a big it's a big thing. And then I I somehow also connect, and not only me, other other big sort of philosophers and that that written books and so on. They say that guilt is is the cause of pain. So mm. we, we are, you know, when we are still not releasing what happened in the past and we're still sort of holding ourselves responsible for what happened, accepting mm. responsibility, it's a good thing, but also saying, okay, it happened and then let it go, learn from mm. it and then move forward. And then that's how, you know, I guess the energy, you know, you know, forgiveness, that's another, another, another thing we, we learn, we hear everybody says, forgive yourself and you forgive others. Um, but that's, you know, how accepting what happened, as acceptance of what is, acceptance of what happened in our lives, and in connection mm. with others as well. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great gift to be able to, to move forward and then man, get this inspired action, as you mentioned about, mm. to go out there and just, just see, you know, what you can mm. do with your life. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and then, yeah, it, slowly, step by step, you know, you're seeing how you can manifest what you really, you really desire. I, yeah, I agree. And, and I think one of the biggest things you've mentioned is forgiveness because I, I realized after about three months that if I didn't forgive everybody who I deemed to be at fault for my problems when it was really me, um, if I didn't forgive everybody and myself, I could possibly spend the rest of my life being in a real hole. You know, I, I, I knew that I would never get out of it. So... I definitely, uh, I decided at that point, having read all the books, you know, I've read lots of books, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you have as well. And I, I said, right, you know, and I went through all the people, um, my friends and work colleagues and things like that, and I forgave them. And I tried to forgive myself, but that was a bit harder. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've got there with that one. And of course, um, you know, being grateful, gratitude is the other big one. Mm-hmm. I think you can, I used to write a gratitude list every morning on my phone and I, I've still got the notes now from years ago, uh, what I was grateful for. And I think that that sort of thing starts to pull you out of negativity and into uh, a receptive mode because it makes you more positive. It makes you, um, you know, less grumpy. And I think the yes. happier you are, then the more likely that stuff's going to happen. And people like like you more when you're not grumpy. I think <laughs> you're attracting more people that actually that they, they are on your wavelength or your own, you know, vibrating on the same level, if you like, you know. And uh, yeah. you you have people that will be surrounded by positive people that will lift you up and, and help you, you know move forward. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, as as a as a kind of a tip, yeah, you talked about gratitude and keeping a list. Uh, journaling is another fabulous method of of um, really sort of keeping 
keeping your thoughts into, you know, connect with what's happened, reflect as well on what mm. happened. Uh, it could be something really beautiful, something amazing, but also something, a, a challenge. And how mm. you actually, you reacted to that. It's, it's, mm. not, it's, not, it's not what happened to us, it's, but actually how we react to it that makes a difference. Correct. Isn't yeah. it? Um, so, so, and I would say, because I, 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 love, I love color, and I, he, you can receive healing through color, even if, you know, through a session or by just, bring, you know, creating more color, bringing more color in your yeah. life. And, and then in your journal, you can actually have some calorie pens and be more, be more joyful, be more playful, be more creative. Uh, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be on. It's not only for women. I just want to say that. It's not only for women. <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's great for men as well. Uh, it's not only for children either. You know, it's, it's also for adults. And adults, we deserve to play. We deserve to have a bit of more fun and uh, things keep keeping things light. Keep life, you know, light. That's what we love, isn't it? It's, um, and that, that's what really helps. And also opens the, the, opens the, the doors of, of receiving more and saying yes to having whatever, whatever you really want in your life. Uh, mm. and, and deserve, you feel that you deserve, that you, you are good. You, we mm. are all inherently good. And we, we can have the best in life. So that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's you, know, how, you know, how we can train our, our thought, our mind, you know, you know, really allocate a bit of time to have some stillness. Because meditation helps as well, doesn't it, Russell? I meditate every morning before I get out of bed. You know, depending on, on where I have to be, I'll have five minutes or half an hour. Um, and it, it definitely helps. You know, I've been meditating now for um, about seven years. Uh, I try to do it every day, and uh, it does make a huge difference to be able mm-hmm. to still the mind. And of course, I teach meditation as well. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, you know, if people could do one thing um, to change their lives, and, and that one thing would be meditation, that I would recommend because it's free, it's easy to learn, and everybody can do it. It makes a huge difference. Fabulous, fabulous. Well, uh, thank you so much, Russell, for being uh, on tonight's call. I hope you enjoy yourself, and yeah. uh, I will. Uh, I will put. I will put the recording up on uh, on my on my business Facebook page, Explorama EU, and uh, and then please feel free to share with uh, with your your friends and and other people. I will also be sharing in in our closed group. Life okay. inspiring conversations. Uh, right. So next week, next Monday, we're going to be back here uh, at 7 p.m. UK time. And uh, Lisa Barry will be on the call. And uh, Lisa was, is going to be sharing three key tips about how to live your life. You know, again, the theme is about freedom, freedom to move forward. And, uh, and she's also she's a, a specialist in, in, when it comes to overcoming traumatic experiences. And she's, she's using color as well as meta health and uh, other techniques. She's got, a, she's got a lovely toolkit box, you know. <laughs> so, so, so it's going to be lovely. She has been on the course beforehand. And uh, I look forward to having her back on the call. So, Russell, once again, thank you. And thank you, Natasha, as well. And uh, hopefully we're going to have more crystal therapy some uh, some tips from Natasha next time so until then enjoy the summer this week we've got it and uh, have lots of lots of laughter in your life okay bye for now bye thank you thank you bye bye bye